today we are in the raised bed gardens and we have a bit of a project or plant that we need to move and that is uh, one of our patches of Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes. But this little bucket here is the uh, culprit that is going to be moved. Hopefully we're not too late but as you can see that's a lot of artichokes in a very small space and it's not going to work. So this bed, it's kind of this funny triangle shape because it's in an area out in front of the greenhouse, sort of towards the driveway. I'm going to say it's a bit of a problem area. But anyways, we have it filled with soil and uh, it's going to be a pretty good spot for this because these plants get pretty big, but they're kind of showy at the same time. So they're not uh, horrible to look at. So it'll be uh, a good thick growth of uh, these perennial sunflowers. So this is not perfect, but you can see there the tubers and uh, as I say this whole mass came from three tubers that were planted two years ago so it's pretty impressive. I'm going to go ahead and plant that and we're just going to slowly pick away at this. That one you can't really see it as well. Don't Want to leave them in the pumps that big? Yeah. I think so because then you're not disturbing them too much, right? Yeah. So these are obviously little tubers, but that's the part that the rabbits like. Now, just like uh, sort of annual sunflowers, you can feed the tops too. You just don't want to be feeding them kind of at the end of the season when they're very woody. So a bit versatile, but you can see it's a bit of a monster as far as roots go. These tubers would be a lot bigger if uh, we had maybe thinned it out last year. <laughs> You can see this clump here, we've got quite a bit in there. As you can see here, I just peeled off a section of this uh, clump and look how thick the uh, artichokes are in there. You can see right there, I mean, they're actually damaged because of the fact that they were in there so thick, I think. Uh, we maybe should have split them up last year, but we didn't. But these are amazingly prolific. Well, part one is pretty much done. We have them all divided up. I still planted them semi-thick, I guess, because as you can see what Stephanie's doing here, we had a lot of loose tubers that came out that they've got roots, but they haven't sprouted yet. And uh, it's crazy what came out of this bucket, but you can see these are uh, a, a reddish skinned variety. And they do have some pretty large tubers and they have a lot of them. This is one of the bigger ones and you can see like it's pretty big in relation to my hand. I know the one thing with these is space helps. So once we get this established, so probably this fall, depending on how it does over the summer, we'll definitely be able to harvest from it because that is a lot of uh, clusters that we've been able to fill. So once we get the rest of these done, we are going to put some mulch on this because we don't quite have enough soil. To cover everything but uh, and we do want to keep the soil fairly moist because this is a brand new bed but uh yeah not unhappy with that that's a lot of plants from one little blue barrel very curious to see how these do now it looks like there's a bear patch in the back we did plant that with some tubers that hadn't sprouted yet so hypothetically before the year is up this whole bed will probably have new green growth in it and uh, come this fall we are going to try some of them harvest Basically, I have uh, some pretty good intel that uh, you can harvest a lot and uh, you won't eradicate them out of the bed. And that's, I think, one thing that's important about this. We've put them here so that they're kind of going to be isolated so that they really can't spread out of the bed because they'd be spreading into the gravel paths. And I don't think they'll do fantastic there. But uh, you definitely don't want to put these plants from what you saw on the root growth on that uh barrel uh these things are very vigorous and spread a lot mildly invasive yeah mildly invasive so make sure if you are planting them or you are growing them to put them somewhere that you can control them or put them somewhere that it doesn't matter if they spread but on that note we're going to go and check out the other variety we have that uh, they've been in the ground for a couple of years well guys in typical hickory croft fashion we are like weeks since we planted those jerusalem artichokes and still haven't picked the Jerusalem artichokes for finishing this video. So I'm going to take this moment to show you how amazing the ones that we transplanted are doing and we're actually going to get to eating them tonight. 
So there is the garden full of Jerusalem artichokes. Look at it. It looks amazing. These were the purple artichokes. And I'm going to just show you here quickly all the little tubers that we uh, planted that uh, didn't have any greens on them and they were buried deep in that bucket. Look at them coming up. We're going to have so many. It's crazy. I definitely think we'll be harvesting some of these this fall. So here's our other existing patch. This has been here now. This is the second year because we planted them in the spring and uh, they did pretty good the first year, but you can see they have started to spread out of the bed. And uh, although it's not the best time of year to maybe be harvesting, we're still going to go ahead and harvest a couple of these and see what they taste like. I'm really curious as to what we're going to see here because some of these would be awfully young ones. Funny food. The rabbits like the greens. I think you're gonna have to go into the heart of the bed. Oh, you just took out them all. What do you got? That's a pretty good size one. Already. Yeah, they're pretty good size, considering this is outside the bed. <laughs> Mosquitoes are horrible. Wow. Oh my goodness, look at it. There's a couple. There's another good sized one. Like I say it'll be interesting to see what these are like because obviously they've put growth into the plant, but we're still gonna try them. They're still pretty firm? Uh so so. There, that's probably enough to give it a try. What do you think? I think so. Let's take them in and try and cook them up. Well, we didn't get to eating these for dinner, so we're actually going to try them up for breakfast. Uh, usually I make a skillet that would consist of potatoes in with our uh, eggs and peppers and so on. And uh, we're going to sub in these Jerusalem artichokes today and see if that works and see what we think of it. Uh, basically, uh, about half of what we brought in was usable. As Chris has kind of said to me, don't judge it by the taste that we're going to get this time around because... As you can see inside here, I mean, these are a little bit squishy. They're a bit spongy. There's a better example. You can see it's all split up and chewed up. Uh, I did try one raw. It wasn't terrible. So uh, I'm curious on these and uh, we're going to definitely give them a second try if they don't taste tasty on the first round here, because as we just said, um, not exactly the right time of year to be harvesting these, but I'm going to get them fried up and then we'll come back with a quick little taste test. Before mixing all of this into a big um, omelette-y kind of mass where I didn't really taste anything, I thought I'm going to give them a try on their own. So right now they kind of have a little bit of salt and pepper on them, and there was a little bit of lemon pepper seasoning that was still in the pan. And honestly, they're pretty good. They're a little bit softer than a potato, like a mushier texture. Um, kind of sweet tasting. Interesting. Definitely could work as a replacement in the uh, thingy or on their own. I bet you they'd be really, really good roasted. Unfortunately, I was doing them for breakfast, so I didn't roast them. But we're definitely going to come back to this and do another video on some uses for these uh, artichokes when the season is actually right for harvesting them. Welcome to Morning Chris. So let's try this and see if it uh, is as advertised. Hot. It reminds me more of a texture of parsnip, cooked parsnip. Exactly, yes. But definitely sweeter. Passes yeah. inspection? Yeah, and we're going to have a lot of them. 